right, morning everybody. Welcome to another round of coffee and questions. Hopefully you got your coffee. Today's topic, I'm gonna get ready for work. I'm gonna go into work for a few hours. Then I'm gonna go ahead and leave. And I need to replace the grounding clamp on my MIG welder, my Miller. And um, I was looking around and I came across an ad on Amazon. I'm gonna switch and show you here in just a sec. And then I took a look at the one out at Harbor Freight. And so I believe what I'm gonna do is I'll get off work early. I'm gonna go out to Harbor Freight. I'm going to be able to pick theirs up, hold it, look at it, but they look identical to me. Let me change your picture. I'll show you what I mean. All right. This one you're looking at here is one off of Amazon. Like I said, it ships prime it says it's made by Hobart, more like Hobart got a whole bunch of these and just put their name on it and raised the price. Cause I'm going to show you another picture of the one at Harbor freight, which is cheaper. And it's the exact same clamp as far as I'm concerned. So I'll leave this up here for a few more seconds. I'll let you read a little bit on here. You can dig deeper if you want to, but this is the exact same clamp. Here we go. Let me show you the other picture. Okay, now this is the one that's out at Harbor Freight, Burger, and it's the exact same clamp as far as I'm concerned from every which way I looked at this thing. $13.99. Okay, now that doesn't include, you know, your 20% discount. So, I mean, initially you're looking at $20.38 versus $13.99. So that's $6.39 initial savings. But if I apply the 20% coupon to it, which is what my intent is, it drops the price to $11.19 for the clamp at Harbor Freight. So that's almost a $10 savings. So what I decided to do, like I said, was get off uh, work early, go out to Harbor Freight. So that's what I'm gonna do and I'll catch up with you in just a second. I'll let you know what I do. Okay, here's that clamp, and I found one out there. It's all they had left on the shelf. So I went ahead and I picked this up. And I'll show you some photographs here in uh, different views. Let's see. All right. Yep, it's nice and strong. You can control it with one hand. There we go. All right. Well, okay. So I'm definitely going to go ahead and buy this. Um, I give you a view here of the internal part if I can. Let's see. There we go. It's where the cord, you know, the cord goes through and you secure it into the clamp itself. Here's the tag on it. A little close up of it. Okay, nice clamp. Okay, 70% off. And I found these. These are these block magnets, ceramic. I'm gonna buy some of these. I need more of them. They're handy as heck to have around. You can always put them together. All right. All right, everybody. Well, we're leaving Harbor Freight. And so what did I pick up? Well, I picked up a pack of those uh, magnets. I've got about four packs here. And uh, you know what? I'll use them. I mean, um, I put them together. If you don't think one of them's strong enough, Put two or three of them together. Now I got a deal while I was out there. They wanted to dump these. They were from the parking lot sale. And the guy or the associate made the remark, I wish we could get rid of this crap and then we could, you know, put other stuff out here or whatever. And I said, well, I'll give you 50 cents a pack and I'll take four of them. And there was a guy standing there and he said, I'll buy the others. I mean, at 50 cents a pack. So they said, sure. And so we went ahead and I picked up the four packs. I picked up the welding clamp. And I got my little free light. I mean, so I'm good to go and I'm heading home here. So I'm gonna cut this and I'll get back in front of you when I'm in a quieter environment because there's a lot of noise because of traffic and all that. All right, I'll see you in just a sec. Okay, so let's do some questions and answers here. I'm uh, responding to things off of a couple of the forums and I've read through the comments and all this stuff. See if we can answer some questions. The first one is what's it made out of? Well, in the case of Harbor Freight, um, it's made out of copper alloy, just like it says here in the picture. So, I mean, that would answer the first question. Now, the second question becomes, if I'm welding thicker material, I mean, how much will this open up? How, how much will the jaws open? Well, I measured it a second ago. I mean, I took a desktop ruler and I just went ahead and I hold this open like this and I measured it. So the comment in there, you know, about, hey, it can open up to three inches. It is correct. It will open to three inches, which is, pretty significant thickness, I mean, if you think about it. So I would tell you, yeah, look, man, this thing will definitely bite down, it'll hold. Um, I went ahead and I put it on my hand, I mean, just playing around, it's not gonna hurt anything, let's see, look. 
All right, and so let's take a close look at the teeth for a minute. Uh, let's see, there we go, right there. And then there's a soft side here. And it's a strong clamp. I mean, there's a lot of strength in that spring. So, and it's going to last you a lifetime. I mean, this thing's incredibly strong. So, you know, I would tell you to darn well consider it for the $9. Um, when I do mine, I'll do a video on it, a uh, second to this. I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip the wire through the ferrule, you know, and, you know, put it on inside there and tighten down that hex nut. That was another question. What kind of a nut's on there? Well, it's a hex nut. And I'll tighten the ferrule down, yeah, but I'm also going to put one or two uh, really good zip ties. Um, I've got some really good ones out there. I did a video on the zip ties that I buy, paying more for them, but they're much higher quality with, you know, the little stainless steel clasp in them. But you can use regular zip ties, but I'm going to just put it on there, I mean, for the added security and securing. So that's the way I'm going to do it. But like I said, I'll do another video on that. So let me move on. Let me see if there's any other questions here. Do I buy my MIG wire and welding rod from Harbor Freight? Um, sometimes. Most of the time I get them from a welding supply store. It's just much higher quality. I did a whole video on the quality of you know, MIG wire and welding rods. I mean, you can go back, I mean, take a look, but um, I get mine out at air gas, but yes, I have bought it out at Harbor Freight when I'm in a pinch or I just don't feel like driving out to air gas. I've done it before, nothing wrong with it. They, they work fine, um, kind of off the topic, but you know, that's just my opinion. I mean, if you have great luck with it, just keep buying them from there. But uh, what do I use for real dirty material? Uh, I use Lincoln Super Arc. There's a reason, again, I've done a video on it. We're gonna kind of go off topic, so I'm gonna come back around to the clamp. But uh, yeah, I use Lincoln Super Arc on places where I can't get to to weld prep, just because it's got better penetration and welding ability. Um, anyway, here's a quick story to give you an example. A while back, I did a video. I went out with a friend of mine. We took a look at a used Miller um, that a guy was selling out of one of his shops because he had upgraded and bought a new one. He said we could hook it up, play around with it, and we did. And I bent over and whispered to a friend of mine, if he gives you a really good bargain on this, take it. He may be thinking, and it's just like what I read in some of these articles, that he's having problems with it and he upgraded. But what he doesn't realize is, take a look at the grounding clamp. It's all frayed and it's funky looking. We replaced this grounding clamp. You can have a fantastic welder. So he ended up buying it and we ended up doing a, a swap out because most of these MIG welders come with like a jumper cable kind of a clamp. They're not the best in the world. I don't know why they do that when they make fantastic welders and then they put some cheap junky grounding clamp on them, but uh, that's what they do. Anyway, we changed it out and it did help the machine out quite a bit. So my advice is if you have an inexpensive buzz box, as somebody made the comment, the welding machines have nothing to do with anything. It's just how good you are at welding. Uh, you're full of crap. I mean, to be honest with you, you are. If you've ever welded on a cheap buzz box and then you step up, to Lincoln, Hobart, Miller, you know, one of the higher end machines and weld on it, there is a significant difference. And you have a lot more versatility and control in what you're doing and tweaking the settings, you know, whether it's, you know, the amperage wire feed or whatever, than you do over these cheap buzz boxes. So, but my advice is, um, somebody is questioning on the forum, you know, is it my machine that's causing me to have problems. If you have poor grounding, you can have trouble with all kinds of things. It's spitting, sputtering, the wire feeds off. I mean, it's coming out and it's not arcing right and you're having all these difficulties and you don't feel that the voltage is set right and maybe your technique is, is bad and maybe it's really not bad. Maybe it's because of something simple like this grounding clamp. So you change over to a much better grounding clamp and a lot of these issues and problems can kind of start to go away. The other alternative is you sit and chase your settings all day long by tweaking, you know, all these knobs and playing around trying to figure out, well, what are you doing wrong? And you're really not doing anything wrong. You just have a really crummy clamp on there to where if you put a really good quality clamp, and I believe that this one is that you can get out at Harbor Freight, especially for the price, it's a damn good clamp. You may do away with a lot of the problems you're experiencing just from this simple upgrade or this simple switch. So try that and see if that helps you out because if you're just like a weekend warrior, you might not necessarily want to upgrade and pay that quite a bit of additional money for that much higher end welding machine. Maybe you can just get by with what you have 
and this will help you to actually improve what you're doing. Just my two cents. If anybody agrees or disagrees, drop it in the comment below. Let me know what you think. But that's my advice on that topic. All right, I'm going to summarize. So I'm the home handyman. I hope you click subscribe, follow me, drop me a comment below. Um, I didn't want to sit and go over and over and make this a long video. I like trying to get right to the point, give you what you need. This is a nice tip for no matter if you have an arc welder, MIG welder, plasma cutter, whatever you got going on, and it has a grounding clamp. And like I said, it's usually those jumper cable kind, and they're flimsy anyway. Nine bucks. You spent a good amount of money to acquire this piece of equipment. Let's put a good grounding clamp on there and see if some of your problems and issues go away. If it doesn't do anything like that, you still put an outstanding clamp on there. Like I said, it'll last you a lifetime. I hope you click subscribe. I'm going to see you on the next video. I thank you for joining me. Thank you, folks. Have a great day. Bye-bye.